Do you have a ductless mini split, whether it's a wall hung or maybe some other type that has a remote control controlling it? Not like a thermostat, but one of the actual remote controls. One of the things that I see in the industry, probably more than anything else, as far as people that are not using their system correctly, and that could be for a number of reasons. I feel like a lot of our homeowner customers they don't really understand the capabilities of their system. They have never really read the instructions. Because of that, they at times are not necessarily using their remote control correctly. And so I wanted to do a video on the probably number one thing that I see homeowners doing incorrectly the most. More than any other thing, I see homeowners all the time running their system on some sort of fan setting wide open, and I think there might be times when you want to do that, but more times than not, you want to find out, I'm not necessarily going through the exact symbol. I mean, we might show that symbol right here. Just realize, depending on the brand you have or the type of system you have, that symbol might look different. More times than not, your fan settings and the mode settings should be on auto for a ductless mini split. Mini splits, unlike a conventional system, most conventional systems, you have a temperature, you put it in a certain mode and you set that temperature and that system, if it's a single stage or multi-stage unit, it's gonna run until it meets temperature. And then of course, inverter systems can ramp up and down until it meets that temperature. But with mini splits, you are taking the inverter technology, the ramping up and ramping down variable technology away from that system when you are setting fan speeds and adjusting those sorts of things, you want that system to have the ability, the freedom, if you will, to you put it in the mode you want, you put it on the temperature you want, and then put everything in auto and let that thing ramp up, ramp down. It'll run more efficiently and it will run like it was supposed to, like it was designed to. The reason I think this is probably the biggest issue that we see more than any other for two reasons. Number one, the inefficiency aspect. When you are telling that system that you want it to run at 100% capacity, for example, you are making that system run more like a single stage system. It's gonna blow and it's gonna cool down that space really fast and then it's gonna shut off or at least ramp way down. So it's just super inefficient. But the other reason it's a problem, we've actually seen this, we've had customers that whether we installed their system or not, we've had customers call us and they'll say something to the effect of, I'm seeing mold, I'm seeing some sweating in a room. I'm seeing some stickiness or feeling some stickiness in the room. I remember one of our customers actually, she had a bed in that particular room. It was a bedroom. <laughs> Go figure, it had a bed, it was a bedroom. But you would touch the bedspread and it was just kind of like sticky feeling, very humid, clamminess, sticky feeling on that bedspread. And the reason we found was she had had her adult son who came into town. He did not normally live with them, but he was staying in that room and he was using the mini split like he would his car. Like in your car, you would turn your temperature, the old school cars. I'm not talking about the new ones that you can set a temperature, but old school, you'd have a, like a little dial there of some type, maybe a twisty dial and you would set it and turn that fan to whatever setting you want and cool yourself down on a hot summer day. Well, mini splits will have issues if you're doing that. You are taking away what it was designed for. In a lot of cases, probably more than anything else on the market, we see mini splits installed oversized in rooms all the time. With some brands, the smallest mini split you can buy is half a ton. You're looking at 6,000, 7,000, sometimes even 9,000 BTU units being installed in bedrooms that really, if you were to do a proper heat load calculation for that room, the cooling needs for that room would be minimal. I mean, we're talking like a thousand BTUs maybe needed for that room. And so if you've caught this video, if I could give you any advice, I would give you two things. The first thing is put that setting on auto always. And about 90% of the applications, there might be a few scenarios that you might not, but 90% of the time, I want that remote control to be an auto in all modes, heating to, I want that system to have the ability to ramp up and down as it sees fit, run efficiently, and then also remove humidity from that space by ramping up and down in the summertime correctly. But the other piece of advice I would give you is just take a moment and read the instructions. Read the owner's or user's manual. Understand what each one of those little symbols or buttons does. 
you would probably save yourself a lot of headaches and honestly probably be a whole lot more comfortable in your home. You might have significantly cleaner air if you were to read those instructions. I've had customers not understand that number one, how often they should be cleaning the filter, how they should be cleaning the filter. I've seen people using fancy cleaners or stuff that they're not supposed to and not realizing they're actually causing more damage than helping. And so again, I would just recommend reading those instructions. You might have a carbon filter on there and you can't get it wet or whatever. Whatever the scenario is, you won't know those things unless you as the customer, as the homeowner, take a moment. I know that you would expect your heating and air guy to take a minute to teach you all these things, teach you how to use the remote. But in some cases, maybe they did and just didn't remember it or maybe they didn't know some things themselves. Maybe there are certain things that you're gonna read in that manual that even your heating and air guy has never taken a time to read. So that would be my parting advice. Read those instructions, use that remote correctly, put that thing in auto mode and enjoy the technology that you've paid for, the high-end inverter variable technology that a lot of these mini split systems have. So thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.